Down in Georgia, a Republican ad has had to be pulled after it was found to be using uh, photo manipulation to advance an anti-Semitic message. Take a look at this ad supporting uh, Republican David Perdue saying, breaking Schumer spending $3 million in Georgia for John Ossoff. So you have Chuck Schumer, obviously minority leader in the Senate there, and then the candidate, John Ossoff, or at least most of the candidate, because that's not actually all of him. Take a look at this photo from 2017, which they used. They took him and they artificially made made his nose larger. And you can see a direct comparison provided by Aiden Pink of forward there, where the rest of his body's the same, but his nose is suddenly more bulbous and pointing out. Now, the people who made the ad said, in the graphic design process handled by an outside vendor, the photo was resized and a filter was applied, which appears to have caused an unintentional error that distorted the image. Obviously, this was accidental. Now, I, I don't know about you. I have done a lot of photoshopping and I have put filters on things. I've never found a filter that just makes your nose bigger. Maybe like one of those dog filters that makes your ears bigger, but that's pretty easy to spot. This is clearly, in Photoshop, they stretched his nose out to make it larger. You know, uh, what I will say is this. Um, the, when Nick Cannon said what Nick Cannon said, a lot of people asked me what I thought about it, right? and. People thought that I was being uh, manipulated by the system of the government or the entertainment business and that I'm handcuffed because you can't talk bad about um, Jewish people in America because there are consequences for that. This is what I'm going to say about this anti-Semitic um, sentiment that seems to be in line with people who also don't like Mexicans think that black people are criminals, Mexicans are rapists and killers. And there's no there's no secret that the people who, you know, hate uh, these groups hate us all. I uh, I believe that there are people in in systems throughout every system in this country that employ racism and oppression on the people of this country. And if they happen to be Jewish, they happen to be Jewish and they are evil just like everybody else. That being said, I don't think that all Jewish people are evil. And I won't say that it's cool to make fun of Jewish people because I, I've gone to Israel. I went to the Holocaust Museum. I sat in that museum where they called out the names of the children who were incinerated and murdered during the Holocaust. And I was sick to my stomach. They had to carry me out. I know that if they called the names of the children who died in the slavery of African Holocaust in this country, we would still be standing there. And not none of them are okay. We don't have to compare. We don't have to. We can just say that it's all messed up. And anybody who participates in doing stuff like that, they're just evil. So to sit here and enhance a picture of a Jewish person, like you've seen uh, pictures uh, enhanced with the black features of people of color. They've done it to brown people. They did it to Obama when they, you know, they they made his ears big or tried to make him look like a primate. All of the people who participate in that type of thinking are the people that we need to flush in the toilet, flush down the toilet. Yeah. And so, you know, Listen, and if you need to do that to win something like a campaign, if that is part of a strategy to enhance a campaign, then what does that say about the people that you are speaking to? Like, that is really what I think about is like, who exactly are you going to move by enhancing the nose of someone whose relatives, ancestors were brutally murdered in a Holocaust? Like what, what, what are, who are the people that you're talking to? Cause those are the people that I don't want to be around because that kind of stuff is appalling. And j being part of a group that has had to watch that kind of stuff happen to us without consequence for so long where it wasn't against the law, there was no Twitter, there was no outrage. I still feel like as a human being, that it's not cool to do that. And, and, it, and it doesn't mean that I'm scared of the Jewish people in Hollywood because I'm going to lose my job. It's just I don't think it's cool to do that kind of stuff. And I don't ever want to be a part of a group of people who think that it's OK to demonize people or to, you know, make them caricatures, you know, in jest yeah. or strategically for the for political gain off with the off with their heads. Get them out of here. Yeah, I think. Look, clearly, they they know that they can't run on, you know, a platform of here are the policies we're going to put into effect to make your lives better. 
They know that they have successfully trained a lot of people, um, you know, playing up their natural predisposition to be hateful towards people who aren't like them and think, I'm just going to activate that. I'm going to, these people don't like Jewish people, I'm going to make his nose bigger. These people don't like black people, we're going to take an ad of Obama and we're going to artificially darken it as they do to, to black candidates all the time uh, to try to scare people. And they did that here. And John Ossoff, um, you know, he's calling it out saying, I'm Jewish. This is the oldest, most obvious, least original anti-Semitic trope in history. Senator, literally no one believes your excuses. I would go maybe just a little bit further, as, as I think a lot of people have probably already acknowledged. If you look at the original ad, it's not just that they made his nose bigger and that is anti-Semitic. That is true. But also they just decided, hey, we could put him with any national Democrat. We're going to put him with Chuck Schumer for some reason. What 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 is, what is he campaigning? with Chuck Schumer. He's campaigned with a million different people. And they're trying to buy Georgia. All this Chuck Schumer, John Ossoff money's coming in and they're trying to buy it. And obviously we're worried about campaign finance getting out of control, but the idea that we're just going to choose uh, two Jewish individuals and talk about them trying to buy everything from outside, all of this from top to bottom is anti-Semitic. Um, and disgusting. I hate all of these sorts of ads when they try to play up racial stereotypes and things like that. Um, we got to be able to identify it and reject it. And I hate to be the one to break it to y'all, but the people who hate black people hate Jews and the people who hate Jews hate black people. Yeah. So I mean, that's why I call for solidarity all the time, because that swastika, that does not exempt black people and brown people. Those people hate us, too. They hate all of us. And so... I just, I, I don't know where we are as a humanity. And I know sometimes I sound idealistic and people think that maybe that's dumb. But I, I if I don't hold on to the belief that in, human beings are innately good and that there are more of us who care, who are not horrible people than not, then I, I don't know how I can make it through the day. Yeah. So just, just to think that, just the fact that somebody sat somewhere and said, this is the move I'm just like, who are these people? Look at look at yourselves. Look at the people around you. Do you want to be around somebody who would think, yo, this is what we do. We're going to make his nose bigger because he's Jewish. We're going to put him with Chuck Schumer because he's Jewish. And you know what? That's going to scare the white people who hate Jews away. Because that's the only people who are going to... Because I would look at something like that and that's not going to move me away from somebody. Yeah. So, that's really, that's very telling about where we are right now. It is. You don't want to, you don't want to be in that room with those people. No. Nah. But they have a lot of, in the rooms of power, they hold a lot of them. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Cast or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.